At that particular time, you know, there was no particular club in the Oma town itself, uh, which was probably maybe looked down on by other Trone Gales because maybe the principal town in, in the county hadn't got a Gaelic club. And again, being a garrison town and um, soccer being very, very strong in the town, Trone Gales maybe looked down on Oma, you know, as this particular soccer town and so on. Gentlemen, I'd like to thank each of you for coming. This is an official meeting, the first of many, I hope. Here, here. Here, here, here. First on the agenda, a statement by the West Tyrone Board that while other parts of Tyrone would quite easily enter the ranks of Gildom, Oma is an exception, as little Gaelic spirit exists here. Let Father McShane speak. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. What I'm trying to say is that the presence of so many stout hearts here this evening is a sign that the Gaelic tradition is not alone in this town, but it's actually flourishing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and long may it continue, gentlemen. Yeah. These men should not be forgotten because a lot of particular times in those early decades, early years, they were working under very adverse conditions and um, compared to what we have today. There was, my father was part of that St. Dennis way back in the 30s. See. And then I had seven brothers that played for St. Dennis. Three of them played for Tyrone. So it all started back then. <laughs> Myself, I started to play for St. Dennis in 1946 47. This evening, the goalkeeper didn't turn up in the minor game. And there wasn't a big rush for to play in goals. So I said, I'll play in goals. Well, that would have been very young, but uh, you wish to stand behind the goals again. At that day, there was only one football. It's not like today when they have five or six. There was only one ball, and you got stuck behind the goals and you get kept kicking back at the play again. I remember Ginger McCrory and, and Paddy and Turbot. Teams now have got their own manager and have got their own videos and whatever. <laughs> As I say, we had, didn't know anything about that. We picked our own team in the changing room and out we went and if things weren't going well at half time we could have moved it around and changed it around to whatever. We was on for the best team to write. The three in a row were, came mostly from boys that, from 48, a lot of them. They could, St. Andrews had some great players that came along. Through these fields of destruction. Of course, I was playing at the time, I was only 18. And I was looking forward to, get, to, to be playing with St. Andrews, to be quite honest, because. Well, at that stage of a high-profile club, a lot of my folk heroes were playing on it. And it was just going to be great to be playing alongside them, you know. Uh, to get playing along with Taddy Turbot, the Iron Man himself, Paddy Corey, Jackie Taggart, Donald Donnelly. And to be playing on that team, Dominic, was just something different now. Because they were the men that made history in Tyrone in '56. They were still about. I think I've played along with Paddy for maybe 10 years, but the, the song was then, Paddy had said to me, you take the ball and I'll take the man. And that was gone, and it was gone for 10 years. My earliest memory of being involved with Thomas and Dennis was the 1963 Championship Final. Uh, we played Galbally at Dungannon. I remember it very well because myself and a fellow called Terry Crichton were the team mascots. And then, of course, we, uh, in 63, we won the championship, which was two years later. And I was only there two years and had my championship medal, which was great, you know. It was great to be part of St. Andrews at that time. 
I know boys would have loved to be playing for St. Dennis at that time, or playing for other clubs, you know. But, as I say, that's, that was St. Dennis to me. Yeah.